So you need to show what products make up X amount of total sales. So you can get an idea of like what the 20% of products end up making up roughly around 80% of your actual total sales, be it in a table or a chart. Well, I'm gonna show you just by using a few DAX measures. So with that in mind, let's jump over to my Power BI desktop. So if you want to follow along, I've got a link to the data set in the description below. So once you've got that downloaded, then we can head over. So all you need to do is head over to get data. And then in this case, the file that I'm gonna be using is a CSV. I have to do is click on that and then transform the data. And because I've just imported a CSV, some of the dates have gone a little bit weird. So what I can do is just quickly transform these to use local under change type. So when you do this, all you have to do is just go date and then select the format that it's coming out as. And as it's United States, just do English United States, do okay. And then it will convert it to the date format, whatever you have set in your Power BI. So now we have that sorted, we can just import this data set because everything else done all its other changes. It was just that date was a bit off. So do close, load and apply. And once we've got that loaded in, all I want to do is just quickly create a table. So we drop in the information and then we want to just put in subcategory, remove that visual and then total sales. But I'll create a measure for that first. So let's just create a measure for total sales, total sales. And then all you're going to do is just create a sum. And then we just want to click sales, which is there. And then save that. Let's just give that comma to break up thousand. Drop that in. And then we've got that information. Let's click out of there. Let's do total sales from top to bottom so we can see the most. Bring that down a bit. You can see it all. There we go. And now we've got our total sales. Let's add in a graph. Now we want to just go with a simple graph with line. So we want to basically a bar so we can see the sales amount. So if we put a subcategory on it as the X axis, and then we put total sales as our column Y axis, and then we can see how that's looking in the same information there. And now we have that information. What we want to be able to do is understand of what level this is ranking. So basically we know we've just sorted this in this order, but we want it to know based on total sales, which one's got the most. We can visually see it here. So we need to be able to tell the measures what we're creating based on a ranking system of where it's going. And the way to do a rank is if we just create a measure and call it rank, we want to be able to look at this whole table and then create what is basically its own sub table that will then give us the ranking of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. And the way you do that is by using rank X, which is like I say, because we're creating a table, X's are always table based. And then within there, we wanna be able to look at all the amount, but to do that, we need to create a filter removal of subcategory. So we got subcategory down here because that's what we're looking at here. And if we add that in, that's now removed what that whole information is. And then it will be able to work out a percentage within this to be able to say of total sales. So that measure that we just created total sales, we now have our rank of it. So basically what it's doing is pulling all the data that is here. So it's basically giving you this amount and then it's working out how much does that make of this? How much does that make of this and make of this and then just sticks them in an order. So if we were add this rank now to the table, we can see it goes one, two, three, four, and it's all in that order. And it doesn't matter if we change this, it's still going to do it in order. Look, phones are still there and everything. If we do it the other way, it would do it the other way. It won't matter. So now it's actually got your rank. And it's also just a useful measure to know anyway, because it's good to know where you got a rank. And especially if you want to do like a top end, you wanted to be able to pull out, like if you wanted to filter by the top five, you could use the rank to be able to create a filter where you can just see the top five. So that's where it comes in really handy. But the key thing here is this allows us to now get a running total because we're now looking at this. We want to get a running total where it adds this to this, and then that amount would be there. So then that would be, what just under 66 660 thousand and then to add the next bit and then that amount will be there and it'll just keep showing you the running total so to do the running total we just need to create a new measure let's just call this running total sales technically i should put subcategory because we're using subcategory as the main thing here but because we're just doing it as a one-off if you're doing multiple ones it'd be good to name it differently but for now let's just do that and then we just want to put in calculate because we want to be able to then create the whole filtering function. And what's going to happen here is we want to look at the total sales. 
we then want to be able to use the ranking. We nope, we don't want to do A, B. <laughs> hey, how it does this. There we go. And no, nope, don't do that. Let's do that. There we go. And now, yeah, we want to add in DAX function top end. And then we want to use our rank. So we just type in rank. And then what that's going to do is basically each time it's going to look at, oh, top end, ch -ch -ch, and go under. But the only way that's going to work is if we then force it to then not look at each line separately, we want to undo the filter. So just like we did with the rank, we need to now add all to subcategory again. So if we go under there and then do all, and then type in subcategory, there it is, there we go. And then we close bracket and then a comma. And then all this, because it's still within top end that we're doing this, we want this to relate to what we're looking at, which is total sales. So we type in total sales again. And then now we've finished that, let's just return, do close bracket and then close bracket again, because that's the close bracket for the top end and then this close bracket for the calculate. Save that, let's give it a comma break. And then if we drop that in, we can now see, as I mentioned, how that is that amount. And then that amount is that and that amount. And then that amount is all that amount. And then da -da 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 -da, and so on and so forth. And it goes all the way up. And then you've got your final list where it's all gone there. And then don't worry about the subtotals. The, the totals are just giving you what the first rank is. So rank here, rank there, because it's top end. And so it's always going with the first one. So it's giving you results. So this information would say, if you're going to use a table, probably Probably might be a good idea to maybe just remove that because it might confuse people but for this example it doesn't matter so now we've got that what we might want to do is let's move rank to here and then what we want to be able to do is then look at our percentages but what i need is to be able to see how much percent this takes up of i'm going to need this number here to be applied across everything and as we keep using all, we're going to be using all again. So all we do is create a new measure. And then we're going to call this one total sales all because it's basically going to look at the final number. So total sales and then put in brackets all so we don't get confused. And then we're just going to just do calculate and then all subcategory. And it would help by actually put in total sales first. There we go. And then it's just a simple case of just doing a close bracket. And then we got our information and then we can do that. And then if we dump this in now, we should have this number all across here. And we do. So that's great. So now we can create a measure where all we're going to do is just divide that to that. And then that will give you a cumulative percentage. So then we can see by this point, how much does this take up of this? And you can visually see it's more than 50 percent. But that's only because you're quickly eyeballing it. But if you wanted to see it clearly and then also add it to this chart, this is where we need to add in that extra measure. So we got this measure here. And because we're using total sales, let's just call this percent total sales. Cumulative. Oh, I just got cumulative. Oh, I hope I saw that right. And then, oh no, I've got you, I think. Cumulative. Yeah, and that's right. And then, yeah. So what we need to do now is do a divide. And the divide is going to be our running total. So we do running, total sales, comma. And then we want to do it by our total sales all because we want the full number, which is this bit here. So if we type in all, that will pop up. And then just to make sure there's no zero, or we just do zeros if there's a blank we add in zero and then we just do that and then we can add in our percentage and then you can have your decimal places i'm actually just going to do this as zero decimal places because it can just get a little bit messy and then if we just drop this in we can see now what takes up at which point so in essence of those 17 items we know the top three make up about 40 percent we're looking at about what makes up 80 percent is just under or probably at half so instead of it being a 2080 it's a 5080 but it gives you an idea of these if you want to get to focus on these ones sell the most and make up the most and then these are all just extras that just happen the time spent on these might not be as beneficial as these because these are driving up more sales and that's where that comes in really handy now that's great if you want to see it in a table now if you want to see it in here then what we can do is drop in under the line y axis there we go that we now have a line that shows you when it gets to 100 percent and then if we just format it uh do, 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 do. where's data label there you are and then we got our data labels i don't like that like that so let's do values display units above that must be under options there we go position line there we go above 
And now that's done. And let's say if you didn't want those amounts, actually you can probably format those a bit better. Let's do total sales, position column, inside end. No, it doesn't look inside center. Yeah, it's not very great. So let's just put it back to auto. And then if we just format it to thousands, a bit better. And we could do zero decimal places. I guess if it went into the millions, then you probably want to have it on auto or just set it to millions. And now we have our lovely little chart and also our table here that can show you how much of your sales make up X amount of percent all in a nice visual. So as you can see, only took a few measures to be able to do this. And technically you could have done it all within one if you were just going to use variables. But obviously I split it out to make it so you could see each step visually to be able to do it. And it works well within a table, as you can see here, and then also within a graph to just give you that insight. Now, if you needed to do anything else outside of this, so say if you dropped in a different header, then you will get an issue. So if we drop in, say, product name, yeah. So if we change that to product ID, it will then break because all the alls have been relating to subcategory. So if you want to have a different view and look at different ones, technically you can create other measures that will allow you to do that. And if you wanted it in the same chart, you could probably get away with doing that. If you did a fill perimeter, and but then you have to say that you need to change this value and then this column for it to work, or you could use bookmarks. So you could just create one that would change for bookmarks and then different people can look at different bits. But or using it as it is, it's just a good visual just to base on like one set thing at that time as your focus and can pull it across multiple different views. So best to sort of understand what do people want to see and then just apply it to that graph. Maybe do two if max. I don't think you probably need to do more than that. Otherwise, it can get confusing. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to carry on your analytical journey, check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.